This is Ramesh Yerabali. Let's take a look at another interrupt, which is the cystic interrupt. The cystic interrupt is used to generate periodic events. That's one of its use. So we'll see an example where we want to produce a wave, a square wave, if you will, where on port F, bit 2, we will produce a square wave like this. That is, it's going to be on and off for 1 millisecond on, 1 millisecond off, and repeats this process. So that's our problem. So we, the way we're going to solve this problem is we will periodically interrupt. And every time we interrupt, we will toggle the software action will be toggle PF2. So this is our trigger and the action is toggle PF2. So let's take a look at the components of our, of our program. The initialization involves our cystic registers, the control register, the reload register, and the current register. So we will set our control register to zero, disabled during setup. We will set our reload value to a calculated period. This period corresponds to our one millisecond. We'll and the calculation is that we our clock is at 16 megahertz. And at 16 megahertz, one millisecond is 16,000 times 62.5, which is one millisecond. So our count is going to be 16,000. So that's what we will call it with. And we, as John indicated in the previous uh, program, we need to set the priority. The priority for the cystic interrupt is in a different register, which is the priority three register of the nested vector interrupt control. And we are setting the priority to be equal to two by this statement here. And Last thing we will do is we will enable cystic because we have we finished the initialization and then we will enable interrupts by setting the i bit to be equal to zero. Professor Yarabali, this seven is new. Last time we wrote a different number to it. Last time we wrote a five. Why is it a seven now? So that's a that's a good question because previously when we enabled interrupt enabled cystic, we wrote a value of five here, which was a one, zero, one. Now we have a different value, which is one, 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 instead of a one, zero, one, which corresponds to a seven. So this bit here is to enable interrupts. That is, we're saying that when cystic crosses the boundary where it goes from a one to a zero transition, we want an interrupt to be flagged. And that's our, our bit to say that. Oh. OK, so let's take a look at how the code is set up. So first, we initialize the cystic interrupt by calling the cystic in it with this value 16,000, which corresponds to one millisecond. We enable interrupts. And our while loop is just sitting there waiting for uh, the cystic to be fired off every every time it crosses the one zero boundary and this is just a wait for interrupt so that we don't we are in a power saving mode so now when the interrupt trigger does occur we execute the cystic handler and within the cystic handler we perform a toggle on port f bit two and we're also incrementing a counter to keep track of how many times we did this flipping of the bit PF2. So how are we going to test it? So let's, let's test this by running it in our simulation. So we're going to uh, make sure we're in simulation mode. So we go to our debug. It's in the simulator mode. OK. And I'm going to um, go ahead and um, build it. Build it. And I'm going to run it. And we have already set it up so that the logic analyzer is monitoring port F bit 2. 
And so, and the rest of, and we also have a viewer here that shows us our cystic timer, the registers corresponding to cystic timer. And this is our PF2, which we can look at here, or we can look at in the logic analyzer. So let's go ahead and run it. Ooh. And we see uh, the cystic causing interrupts and we can measure the time between our two interrupts and that's 5.6 to 5.690 so that's exactly that's pretty close to a one millisecond works and it works and we can also see the LED here but this is a visual that doesn't tell us whether it's actually uh, going on and off at one millisecond so we looked at how the cystic can be used to generate a square wave, but maybe there's some interesting applications for this. John, what do you think? Yeah, we can use this type of wave to control our motor. And so we're gonna build a robot and use this cystic wave to apply power to the wheels. Shall we build it? Let's do it. <laughs> 